Hi, welcome back to Speculative Communities. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you kind of an introduction to the Hainish universe. And as always, I love to start off with a quote from the text that we're discussing. So this first quote is from The Dispossessed, um, which is a book that is set within the Hainish universe. So here's our quote. Those who build walls are their own prisoners. I'm gonna go fulfill my proper function in the social organism. I'm going to go unbuild walls. So um, we're going to return back to this quote um, because it really is going to kind of guide our discussion around um, the Hainish universe and kind of help us get introduced to it. But first, let's talk about what is the Hainish universe. So the Hainish universe is the setting of a series of novels, novellas, and short stories by Ursula K. Le Guin. The works in the universe from the form the Hainish cycle. Um, however, she didn't necessarily describe it as a Hainish cycle and didn't really view them as a, a series um, necessarily. Uh, notable works, though, within this shared universe include The Left Hand of Darkness, The Dispossessed, The Word for World is Forest, um, the short story The Fisherman of the Inland Sea, which we covered on this channel, and The Day Before the Revolution, among many other short stories and uh, works. So how did this universe come to be? Um, or how did it really get started? What are the origins of it? Uh, this universe was formed slowly and piecemeal from Le Guin's first novel, Rokanon's World or Rokanon's World. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, but it wasn't until The Left Hand of Darkness that the universe began to really become recognizable to many. It was never conceived of by Le Guin as a series or even necessarily really like a shared universe. Instead, it was more of a plot convenience for her, um, is how she puts it. It's a way of exploring different possibilities, such as a planet with no gender and no war, or a moon populated by an anarchist society. Um, it really comes down to the what-if um, type approach to science fiction. Uh, and speculative fiction. Certainly, her parents' work in anthropology played a role in structuring the cycle. Um, almost all stories revolve around the meeting of two or more cultures or ways of being and the interaction that follows, for good or bad. So what are the things you need to know when you're getting started um, with reading the Hainish cycle? Well, uh, the best book to start with in the cycle is probably The Dispossessed. Um, it's my personal favorite in the collection, although I love every book within this cycle. Um, some are not quite as well written or quite as engaging, but overall I do love every uh, work in its own way. Um, the best book to start with, though, in the cycle is The Dispossessed, as it's placed not only earliest in the loose chronology, but it articulates the ethos for the entire universe, which, again, we'll come back to. However, any book may be appropriate spot to hop into. Uh, the Left Hand of Darkness is the most well-known work within the universe, and it places the ecumen, which is a central feature of the universe, at the center of the work, and it's also the last um, one in the chronology of the universe. So the first thing you need to know is that it's really kind of a loose canon. This is not a series. Um, it's very much a playground for her to work within, right? So between stories, details of the universe change or are adjusted for convenience of narrative. Um, sometimes timelines can get a little bit fudged. Uh, sometimes um, details might get kind of swapped around. Um, really don't go into this expecting kind of a um, Lord of the Rings style approach or a J.R. Tolkien or even... Um, like a Dune approach where there's really like a solid canon to it. Instead, you really want to be thinking of this more as like a collection of tales that all share a um, an ethical background um, and kind of a philosophical approach. Now, they are all within the same shared universe, so you can kind of go like, oh, I recognize this place from this place. Um, but you really don't want to approach it by like mapping everything out into detail because your maps aren't always going to be lining up. Speaking of that, let's kind of um, map out this universe a little bit. I know I said not to do that, but there are a couple things that you should know that are pretty consistent between all of the works. So first things first are the Hain. Um, the Hain are kind of the original human beings. Um, it's kind of an old trope in science fiction at this point, but it was pretty novel um, when she was writing these works. Uh, the Hain are kind of um, the original human beings that seeded the galaxy um, and they're the origins of Earth human beings, but also other um, aliens, if you want to think of them that way, but human beings on other planets, um, such as the race of people we meet in the Dispossessed, the Sedians, 
or the um, group we meet in the left hand of darkness or the word for world is forest. These are all variations on human beings to some extent. Uh, some with different abilities or different physical properties, but all human beings originating from the Hainish group. Now, in the chronology of it, which we're not going to get into too much, um, the Hainish seeded all these planets partially as experiments or um, other endeavors, and then contact was lost between all these different groups. Um, one thing that's helping all these different races of human beings across the galaxy come into contact with each other again is not only space travel, but also a device called the Ansible, or Ansible, which is a device actually invented by the protagonist in The Dispossessed, um, who's named Shevik. Um, but the Ansible is a screen, device, um, communication tablet, if you want to think of it, that allows people to communicate um, impossibly far distances apart, um, whole universes apart, um, and to be able to kind of uh, share brief messages, almost like text messages through space, if you want to think of it that way, that are instantly going from one place to another. And so because space is so big in this work and um, space travel is very difficult for most of the work between most of the planets, uh, warfare is pretty much impossible between the different kind of races of human beings in different planets. Instead, communication is really kind of the only thing that people can share with each other. Um, and all these, this kind of collection of planets is formed, is known as the Ecumen, which is kind of a loose collection of information trading member planets, um, joining for the purpose of cooperation, adventure, scientific progress, and joy right? It's not a very warfaring universe. Um, war is definitely happening in it, but this collection is very much, um, it has its political roots in the Ansible. It's notable that Shevik, um, kind of this loose anarchist, um, an anarchist in an anarchist society who's fighting back against that society in many ways, um, it's notable that he is the one who designs the Ansible because that really does kind of form part of the backbone of the Ecumen. Again, it's a loose collection of in freely information trading and information sharing member planets for scientific progress, joy, cooperation, all the things we talked about. The next thing to really talk about within um, the Hainish universe is kind of this continuing symbol that Le Guin uses in a number of her works. For example, it's also in um, Always Coming Home. Um, but one of the more notable ones is kind of the wall and bridge symbolism. So the wall is obviously division between people. It's one of the most notable symbols of the dispossessed. It's what the book opens up with is this kind of um, idea of the wall and kind of this idea of separation. And the left hand of darkness, the other kind of big work in this universe, opens up with an image of a bridge, um, the idea of connection between people. And so that's constantly like an ongoing theme and idea within this universe is the idea of separation and connection between peoples. Um, the final thing to kind of note uh, before diving into the universe is that it has kind of an arc of progress throughout it. Um, throughout, uh, the human beings are kind of relearning psychic abilities um, with kind of the final, one of the final psychic abilities being foretelling, like basically predicting the future. Um, but also things like mind speak, being able to communicate psychically one another. Um, there's all sorts of like abilities that are kind of forming back into the human lexicon, if you want to think of it that way. Additionally, the ecumen itself, this collection of planets, is expanding throughout kind of the chronology of this universe, where more member planets are joining and scientific progress kind of blooms because of it, along with cultural progress. Um, if you do want to get more into the history of the universe itself, I highly recommend um, that you watch a video by Jack Jensen titled History of the Hainish Universe, uh, dash Ursula K. Le Guin. There should be a link to it down below if you want to check that out. Again, it's a great kind of crash, crash course more into the history um, rather than kind of more, my, uh, more thematic approach, if you want to think of it that way, uh, to the Hainish Universe. So finally, I want to kind of briefly talk about why Reed uh, works from the Hainish universe. So first things first, it has that arc of progress that we talked about, um, where it's in many ways optimistic um, that humanity can kind of rejoin, that things are growing back together. It's not a slow decline um, or like an arc towards this technological doom like you see in a lot of science fiction. Instead, it very much has... Um, kind of this mindset around encountering the new that um, 
things can go poorly, but that um, we as human beings have to struggle and try and do our best to understand one another, to reach across the wall or across the void of space, literally. Um, again, it's kind of like Star Trek as written by an anarchist and a feminist, but it, that doesn't mean it's necessarily utopian. It's very much an ambiguous utopia when things do get utopian. Um, there's realistic elements. Um, so, for example, like in The Left Hand of Darkness, we open up with that with a bridge um, being built. But this bridge also has a keystone in it. And this final keystone is made of, uh, traditionally, it was made of, we learn, a mortar of ground bones mixed with human bloods. Human bones, human blood. And without the blood bond, we're told the arch would fall. Again, really pointing out that connection between people is not easy. Um, it may cost human life. It may take a long time. But it's absolutely essential. To kind of tie this whole thematic discussion up, um, with the Hainish universe and kind of the ethos of the entire universe. Um, I want to quote from Ursula K. Le Guin's essay, American SF and the Other, in the November 1975 issue of Science Fiction Studies. Um, in it, she kind of talks about um, how so much of science fiction is about viewing things as the other, viewing things with the alien and encountering it. And she really kind of critiques um, the approach to what is perceived as the other. Here's what she says. If you deny any affinity with another person or kind of person, if you declare it to be wholly different from yourself, as men have done to women, as class has done to class, and nation has done to nation, you may hate it or defy it, but in either case you've denied its spiritual equality and its human reality. You have made it into a thing to which the only possible relationship is a power relationship, and thus you have fatally impoverished your own reality. You have, in fact, alienated yourself. Again, this whole series, the whole ethos of it, goes back to that quote we started off with, um, which is the unbuilding of walls. I think Le Guin kind of saw herself a little bit in Shevik, um, and I think any reader of Le Guin's, especially the Hanish universe, really finds themselves in Shevik to some extent. That desire to kind of meet with the other, um, to encounter the other, and to acknowledge its humanity while still realizing um, the differences present, right? To unbuild walls. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you go out and um, enjoy something from the Hainish uh, universe. It's a great universe to dive into if you haven't before. Um, and with that said, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.